And when I was telling about the rat foot, he goes, oh yeah, you use it like I do, like a filter, but, you know, and he pulls out like 12 of them. He goes, I've been using that for years. You're kidding. Like, oh, he's the only guy I've ever seen that uses the rat in that way with no distortion. Wow. A lot of people, it's me, it's a kind yeah. of a clean app and turn the yeah. distortion on. Hey everybody, it's Derek, aka Mr. Shred from Masters of Shred. We are on board the 2023 Monsters of Rock Cruise, and I have a very special guest with me. Yes, you know him well. This is the second time on the show talking Shred. It is none other than the funk metal string skipping Shred King, the mighty Nuno Betancourt. You forgot school skipping. School skipping. Yeah, oh god, I was true. That's right. I had in, we had that in the first interview. Go, I'm good. Ahead. I'm hanging in there, dude. How the heck have you been on this cruise so far? Good. Yeah, great. It's Hanging great. in there. Yeah. I saw you guys perform uh, some songs for the first time ever on this cruise, right? Yeah, I'm sure you noticed it was the first time ever. Oh, no. I, you would never tell. Let me tell you. And you guys have already seen the clips. Incredible. You did Banshee. You did Rise. People were freaking out. I think, I think Rise is actually all over the internet, that performance you did. I think Guitar World was talking about it. Mm. And it's only took about 24 hours, and it's everywhere. So it's... That's it, man. It's the, uh, it's the new digital age. Yeah, that's about right. The last time we spoke, 2018, you had told me that you guys were going to put out a new Extremes album, mm. right? And uh, four years later, it came out, three songs... First one breaks over 2.5 million views in a month. I would say the wait was worth it. You'd agree. You know, that's up to you and whoever's listening to it. I mean, for us, we probably could have released it. You know, it would have it was done 2019, 2020, but we didn't want to put it out through the pandemic because for obvious reasons, we just wanted it, you know, instead of being another soundtrack to that kind of bizarre, right. bizarre few years, we thought it'd be more of a celebratory thing after everybody kind of gets let out right. of prison. Right. We go back to it. So uh, I think, you know, because that's the type of music we play. So I think it was... For us, it was worth waiting those extra couple of years. And, you know, people start going out to cruises again, doing things like this. Because it, was, it was, that definitely was a weird time. Right? Yeah, yeah. Bath and Arts have put out some music at that time. And it definitely seems like these tracks, especially with guitar, ignited a fire under guitar players, which you've already talked about and discussed in length. But was that intentional or accidental, the, <laughs> the uh, shifting of the plates here in the guitar world via your playing on these songs? I accidentally did these great solos. I don't know what happened. Uh, no, man, I, I, you know, it wasn't any specific, you know, uh, concerted effort to, like, you know, do anything that I haven't been doing for 35, 40 years, you know, it's, it's, it's interesting when you do, when people talk, the way you hear people talk about the solo when Rise came out, and uh, it's really great, it feels great, and it's exciting, but uh, what was great was seeing some old, older fans from the past going, uh, yo, you didn't hear him do this type of stuff on Peacemaker Die or do this or that. So it was kind of like something you've been doing a long time. So I think technically and, you know, within, within what I do, I don't think it's too surprising. But, you know, when I, when I was kind of seeing what was happening, even within 24 hours, I was just like, what, you know, people, it was different. You know, it was like, it wasn't just your typical kind of, uh, even your peers and your heroes hitting you up saying, right. usually, usually we have to do that in a way. Like, hey, your new album's out, great, good, good job, kid. You know? right. But it was more like, you know, kind of a, what the fuck, dude, what are you doing? I was like, you know, anybody from Zach to Brian May to these different people, yeah. I'm like, Wow, this feels a little bit different, and um, I, I think, you know, look, I think I think a lot of it might have to do with the fact that, um, you know, Steve Lukather they're saying things to me like, you know, like, man, we, I haven't heard something like this in 20, 20 years that really like knocked me out. You know, it's it's because I know you can play, which was nice of him to say. It wasn't like something all of a sudden I practiced for for a year, but he was he was like, no, I know you can play, but he goes, you know, it's just it's been a while. You know, he started going back really think about it. When was the last time maybe a guitar solo or in, in a band? You know, right. so I think a lot of it, when I was watching it, I thought the video had, had a big part in it, the video of the band. And the reason is, is because you, you know, as well as I do, like there's so many great guitar, guitar players out there now, even the younger and up and coming guys that we all see on Instagram and kind of, mm -hmm. you know, make our jaws up with what they're doing. But the way they deliver guitar and solos is most of the time sitting in a chair in their bedrooms or in a studio, which is, by the way, I'm not frowning. I, I follow that shit. Mm -hmm. I, you know, it right. blows my mind. A lot of them play circles technically around shit that I don't even know what they're doing. You know, all different sorts of picking stuff. But I think maybe what was missing yeah, is that all of a sudden, I mean, I'm glad it was extreme, but all of a sudden the guitar play in a band with songs and harmonies and a hook and a bridge, like kind of an old school approach right. where guitar players used to play a solo within a 
a song, a song within a song, mm -hmm. almost. Yeah. And really, uh, I, I think that and the mythology of, it's not just, a, it never was just about guitar player. It's, it's about the mythology of rock and roll. Meaning what? Meaning watching a band go all in passionately, emotionally, physically. True. Because when you do play guitar, it is a, there's a physical side to it. You know, mm -hmm. it has to be like it kind of comes through you. So sitting on a chair, show, if, I, if I had done maybe what the label probably would want me to do, which is what everybody does, I'll give them a sneak peek of the solo in the studio before it even comes out. Yeah. If I played that Rise solo, for instance, it would have been like, eh, in a way. You know, mm -hmm. it would have been yeah, like, like the sitting in the chair doing another, yeah. like, it's within, you know, when people say like, well, how do you do a solo like that? It's like the song feeds that. Mm -hmm. You know, the song kind of gifts you what the tone of the solo is how fiery it is, you know, right. I always try to play the solo for the song, like that's my biggest goal in life. And, you know, Rise is an up-tempo track, it's got its, it's, got its energy, so those sections in, 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 as a band, you know, the ganga, all that stuff to let you go, gives you, gives you those, mm -hmm. it guides you where to go. Right. It's not that, you know, you have a choice as a guitar player, you're either gonna do like, all right, it's time for me to solo, and I'm gonna let everybody know what I can do, or, which is good, but I think you're not servicing the song. I think you're, right. you're, you're leaving it, and you're not you're not using that power of the song. Or you can be like, let the song emotionally feed you, let the song give you its musicality, the chord changes, everything, and then you know close your eyes and go for it and see what mm -hmm. you can come up with. And I think whenever you do that in a song, you know, he, he, you know, the, the perfect example is when Banshee or or Rebel came out. I remember this one dude reviewing goes, yeah, you know, the solos aren't as jaw dropping as Rise. And when he said that, I was like. That's perfect. That's the whole point. Meaning, it's not an Olympics. Right. He's thinking like technically, it's like, oh, it doesn't have that bit at the end of Rise, so it's not as impressive. But for me, that's what he's missing. You know, the greats, well, like, you know, like, uh, like Edward Van Halen. On the f same first album, you got Eruption, where he changed the world, right? Yeah. And you're thinking, what the fuck was that? What is going on here? Right. Technically, emotionally, sound wise, everything. Mm -hmm. But in the same album, you got Ain't Talking About Love. Right. Where he has the balls to go. Da, 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 yeah. And somebody can go like, what, what is that? That's exactly right. Yeah. So the point is, is you play for the song. And I think you'll, if you service the song, I think you get way more respected. And I think it just, you shine more because you're not doing it for yourself. You do right. it within a band. I know this is a long winded answer for what I was talking about, but I think it's super important. I think, I think if you go through the new extreme album, I'm hoping the goal has always been that Whatever solos in Rebel that people have heard belong in Rebel. Uh -huh. Whatever's in Banshee, which is a bit bluesier. Yeah, it's flashier, but it's bluesier and it moves around with the tone of the song. That's what, and it's still me. It's still yeah. me doing that version. I'm not a blues player. But what is that version of that song with a, a Nuno Betancourt playing? And I'm sure somebody else playing that same song would be different. Right. But hopefully they'd stay in the, in the right. feel and the tones. So we know that the country and the world is all spoken. They love the Rise solo. Yeah. What is your favorite solo off the album? It's okay to name tracks that we haven't heard yet. We can do this at a later date. People can look back I haven't and hear about you, it. haven't sent you the link to the album for this? No, not yet. Well, I've only been teased. It's supposed to. It's supposed to, it's supposed to have a link to the interview. But, look, I, I think, you know, it's funny because I don't know that Rise is the best song on the album. I don't know that Rise is the best solo on the album. You know, meaning, meaning that uh, it's, it's the best solo for Rise. Horizon. You know what I mean? Like so, but one of my favorites on the album, like you know, uh, you know, my, my top two or three. One of my favorites is a song called "Other Side of the Rainbow," which okay. I believe is the next single. Anyways, it's very different than those three. Really? Oh yeah. Okay. I mean, you know, look, everybody knows that if those are the first two or three singles of Extreme, you know, there's about a left turn about to happen or a right turn. Right. And it's kind of a twelve string, almost like I don't know. It's a driving song, but it's very different for us. I don't think we've even done a song like that with yeah. this kind of groove for an okay. acoustic song. Right. But there's a solo, an electric guitar solo in it that uh, that is the perfect example of like, it's a it's a beautiful song melodically. It's kind of you know, a bit poppier. And we used to have this term, man, when we did solos, it was like, you know, there was, there was burn solos, you know, you kind of, like, you, right. you, you first your shred, but burn, let's burn. And then there was melody solos. But then I used to think, man, the, how can you do a Mern song? You know, like Mern, which is Mel melody. Melodic burn. burn. Yeah, where you yeah, can still burn. be fiery. Everybody, I think used to think that you can only be melodic. You can't be melodic if you shred, which I think is so wrong. And 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 yeah. I and I think people always thought like, yeah, to be melodic and to be tasteful, you got to be like you know uh, David Gilmore, and you got to yeah. play super slow, whatever. And I always thought, nah, I don't, I don't think that's correct. I think you can play melody, and I think Rainbow is one of those epitome of like there is some some movement, yeah. but it's still super, you know, super within the wheelhouse of the song. Okay, that's gonna be. I'm excited to hear about that. And I'll think about this too. What about Vito Brada? 
Yeah, I mean, perfect he example. burned that shit up, but it's so melodic. You're yeah, like, oh exactly. my god! No, no, exactly. Right. That, so that's they a perfect example of right. guitar players that that can still do make it fun. Yes. You know, and and that was the thing. You remember, you know, when, when uh, my manager asked me when I was cutting the album, he's like, well, what are you, what are you doing with the album, guitar wise? And I said, you know what, I'm doing what I do with the song, but if there's one mission, if for me it was always like to kind of bring back the joy. Yeah. You know, the joy and the fire and the passion and the fun of guitar playing. Excitement of yeah. also hearing songs yeah. like this and waiting for the solo. Yeah. As guitar players, we usually all know where the solo's coming in. It's usually that two minute, <laughs> yeah. usually two minute, 30 second marker, right? We get excited for that. Yeah. You don't really see that a lot of albums because you don't see bands really together doing that. We're seeing full length instrumentals, which again, I love. Yeah. But when you see with a full band, it just, it's a whole other kind of ball game, it's, you know? It's, it's a different thing. And I think from our era and from our generation, there isn't a lot of bands left doing that or have been doing that in, in a long time. Where, not that they're not putting albums or doing it, mm. but I think, you know, the, you know, for the same reason this album, when you say worth the wait, it, it, we had another 30, 40, you know, songs that we were, when we, you know, when, when we as idiots are like, yeah, well, there's an album coming in 20, you know, 2013 or 2015. It was, for real. There were songs done, you know, and, but, you know, I, I've always said to Gary, it's like, I never just want to put, put things out that, I don't know, don't turn me on, yeah. you know, that I'm not so proud of. You know, I, I said, well, I was, I was sitting down with a few, of, uh, when, before this came out, I didn't want to wait for the album, so we had this little gathering with myself, Steve Vai, Morello, a bunch of other people, and it's like, the fact that I was playing in the album in a, in a studio in Hollywood, that I would do that, knowing who I am, and kind of more laid back, and, sh and was shying away about the stuff. Right. You know, means that I was proud enough to like, you know, yeah. show them, show my peers and heroes. Yeah. And I think people, you know, when people talk about Edward Van Halen and the influences or even Vi or, or, or Paige and, my, and Brian May, don't get it twisted. It's like, when you do an album as a guitar player, you obviously have those influences, but I'm going to bury those guys. Like I'm, tr I'm going in and do an album because I want to fucking take them down. Yeah. Because that's the level that you have to be to believe that you're like, man, I, I, you know, would you have the balls if Edward came in and played and the, the soul, you know, to rise? Right. You have to feel that and believe that. Yeah. Even if he fucking hated it, it's like just to fucking have the. He, and which he, he actually was there. He heard it. He, right? he was there, but he never heard it. I, oh, I didn't really? Let him hear it. Yeah. <laughs> we can talk about that story if you want. That idiotic <laughs> move that I. That I <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But uh, but you know, you just have to have that belief. And, and really it goes back to when you're like 11, 12, 13 when you first start playing. It's like when you write something, you know when to put it out to the world because if you can play it for your best friend or your brother or somebody that you respect that's going to tell you the good, the bad, and the ugly, yeah. dude, that sucks, that's ridiculous. But Or you're like, hey, check this out. Yeah. When you get that little kid bubbling feeling, butterfly feeling that when you think you create something cool, a riff, a song, a solo, that's when that exact feeling is when you know you can share it to your fans of the world. Right. It's that simple. It's really yeah. that simple. It's you have true. to be proud enough about it to show you. 100%. And I think we're all stoked. And the album's coming out again. Refresh. I think you said it was June the 9th. 9th. Got it. Yeah. Don't yeah. forget that. Here we go. June the 9th. Also, can you guess what favorite solo I have off that album so far? We only got three singles. Yes. Knowing you, even though I might have cheated a little bit earlier, but I would think yours would be Banshee. Thank you so much. That's it. That's the moment there. I think that's the that's lane right there. When I heard that, I go, oh my gosh. This is some, now, again, there's no offense to this. I said, this is some old school Nuno. This, yeah. I'm digging. I'm loving. I loved Rise. I freaked out, melted my face. And then I heard that. I'm like, this, this song is just killing me. I love yeah, it. Yeah, I think the song. It hits, every, songs hit everybody differently, right? Yeah, so, and that's what me, the cool thing about it. I think Banshee, what I loved about it was it felt a little old school in the sense of almost even first album before porn graffiti in a way. You know, like very kind of like from that little girls like era of just like kind of rock and roll some blues but still metal in there you know which right. is kind of like more Aerosmithy, you know yeah it, you know also the styling yeah i saw some clothes you guys were wearing that i actually oh yeah the I, video <laughs> i bought a few of them I'm like i know where they got that yeah you, i know that, I see that algorithm <laughs> that is that algorithm. great i love the whole style everything was just uh killer in that video you know yeah look i when, when all the videos you see and all the clothing and everything you do it's like yeah it's it's I almost embarrassed to say it, but that was all coming from me in the sense of like I, I always whenever I read a song literally when we're writing the song lyrics at that time I don't give it six years ago or two years ago two months ago I always write what I see oh, okay I always write what I see visually what I see for a video what I see is wearing what I see with tone and songs while I'm writing it wow and I always have that page next to all the other stuff and it always seems to be spot on, you know, and like how, you know, I call it simplexity of the word. Wow. You know, where it's like, if they're sim simple songs, right? 
but you know, but I think a good songwriter has changed in decades, decades. Meaning it's a verse, chorus, a verse, chorus, a bridge, right. maybe a solo, and we're home. And it hasn't really changed that. Just don't listen to three sides of every story. Except for three sides. No, but there was there, <laughs> were, there was a lot of those in there. There was a lot of, for the first yeah. two sides. But um, but you know, but uh, and it's one of those things where. It, it, that's the simple approach. Yeah. But I think what makes bands unique and different is the complexities that we do, whether it's a guitar solo or the harmonies or lyrics mm -hmm. or what we're doing. So they, they, a good pop rock metal song is, is has a simplexity to it. Yeah. Where it's like, it just gets you, the hook is amazing. But if you go back and listen to it, you rediscover new layers that you pick yeah. back of something, or a solo or a bridge yeah. or harmonies or whatever. Exactly. It's, it's, it's really is amazing when you think about it that way too. And. You guys are going to go hit the road in a Thicker Than Blood tour with Living Color, yeah. which is going to be in, insane. Now, question though, I saw the dates. You don't have any Florida, you don't have any Tennessee. I'm going out to Tennessee and moving there, so you got to help me out here. I any just, ideas? I was just yelling at somebody about that. I actually, you know, because you know, I'm, I'm kind of oblivious to like, we're doing dates, we're doing US run, dates come out. And I'm looking at them like, where the hell is the whole like south of, where's the south? What happened to the south? Did, uh, we, Civil War, what's going on here? <laughs> then you guys are gonna leave the country right yeah. after those dates. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, I think, to be honest with you, I think what it was is we probably have no business even touring in August yet, I think, because they were done so late. I think the excitement of Rise and the excitement of the songs were a surprise. I think, you know, our agents, nobody was thinking, okay, you put the album out in June, maybe we start a run in February, March. Yeah. And I think because of, you know, you know how it is, all of a sudden, you know, you get yeah. some streams, you get some love, everybody wants to book you, right. and call you, and they're like, come on, guys, we've always loved you. Uh, you know, we haven't booked you in 10 years. <laughs> yeah. And, they, and so they, they, I think they were squeezing in as many dates as possible because you can't do all the dates you want to do within three weeks or whatever right. it might be. But I think, you know, I was hoping we'd come go up and down a little bit, but it's kind of like a, it's a Spinal Tap East West Coast tour where they did Boston and they did LA and it was a wrap. Yeah, that's it, uh, yeah. Uh, but we'll be, I think what the idea is we come back and we do all the other cities, you know, at some point, yeah. which, which I, it sucks, but. You know. It would be great though, to yeah. see that. I mean, cause that, maybe even the guys opening up, I mean, yeah, Living Color there. It's like, yeah. that's incredible. Yeah, it's, guys it's, it's are interesting, Bill. I think, I think we, you know, we always had a few bands that were outside the spectrum of we were as well, of rock and metal in a way. And I think as, even with extreme people are like, what do we do with these guys? They're kind of rock, but they're funk, but they have horns. And, and I think, you know, it was like us, Living Color, King's X. Saigon Kick. Saigon Kick, like a few yeah. bands that were just, that we always tried, you know, uh, the, the, the land of mystic toys, you know, like we would try to pair up together because we were all you know, Yeah, you know, sometimes I guess these, uh, sometimes it's hard for people to grasp their head around this extreme musicianship, yeah. no pun intended, yeah. right? Yeah. Um, all right, so fan questions. Questions. We've asked, and boy, do we get a lot, a lot of questions. But I, I narrowed them down. I picked the best of quick ones for you. So H. Roth, I probably saw that wrong. Hunter Roth is his name. What amps did you use on the new record six? Um, listen, it's, when people ask me about gear, it's it's usually ninety nine point nine percent the same thing I've been using since I was fifteen. But in, you know, amp wise, that that'll probably be the, the difference. But I've been using um, on this album, I used a uh, DSL two thousand. Okay. Um, uh, Marshall, of course. Yeah. And uh, sometimes when I tell people that, they're like, really? You know, because that's what I used the other night yeah. as well. But I, I do it in a diff very unique way. Like, if people, you know, if you looked at my, if you came up on stage and tried my rig, you'd be like, hey, you know, something's wrong with your setting. Somebody must have went like, you know, but, you know, fucked with you. And I'm like, no, 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 that's it. And it's like, you know, the, 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 the presence is at one. High end is at one. Mids are at one. And like the bass is at four. And then you just turn it up. And that's the Nuno setting. Yeah, and that's like, that's, and, and it's because I like to play louder because I like the way it sounds, but I don't like it to hurt or like right. brittle. So that's the way to like, to be able to hit stuff hard and, 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 and still be percussive the way I play. Yeah. But have enough top end and, and for the pick and everything, but you can just crank it and it's not like that, you know, kind of brittle stuff, you know. So, and, and then there's a rat pedal on top of every amp yeah. that I use. I don't use it. Distortion. I have that with the distortion almost all the way off, right. and the volume up, and the filter in the middle. But that's just—it's funny. It was on the, was out, when I was on the Gen X tour, and everybody was trying each other's rigs out. Every guitar player from Ring Vey to to Vi, they'd be like, "All right, what the fuck does the rat do?" And I'm like, "Wow, check this out!" And I go play, and I turn it on and off. And they go, "Nothing. I got nothing from it." But I go now, like play percussive, like I do, like mute something, yeah. just to chug it. Yeah. And I go turn it off, and they're like, "Oh shit." 
All it is is a filter to tighten up all your bottom end. Like that's my secret sauce for me and how I play very percussive. So it's like a filter pedal. It's like a fil- it's like a filter pedal. Yeah. I was just introduced to that, and I play one for the first time. I go, oh my gosh, this is my secret sauce because nobody uses them really. Yeah, you- and I'm having a prototype one done because it's just such Dude, a I, unique. I, I, I've been telling that story. Sound you're, you're getting story. out of it. I've been telling that story with the rap pedal I've been using since forever, and the only one I, 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 I recently did, you know, probably who Rick Beato is. Of course. Channel, but I recently yeah. just did a, an interview with him in Atlanta. To, like on the way here, and when I was telling about the rap pedal, he goes, "Oh yeah, you use it like I do, like a filter, but, you know." And he pulls out like twelve of them. He goes, "I've been using that for years." Like, oh, yeah, he's the only guy I've ever seen that uses the rap in that way with no distortion. Wow! And a lot of people. It's made to put yeah. kind of a clean app and turn yeah. the distortion. Yeah, but it's not. That, that's incredible. So, so no Randalls then. No Randalls turn around now. Okay, I mean we had that the signature one, that, yeah. the cool split like that. So, okay, and we got another one here, um, which is from Southpaw underscore. Shoo shoo, Suzanne Adams. Okay, I'm always drawn into Nuno's interviews because of the passion that he has for what he does that comes through when he talks. He's a great storyteller with a great sense of humor. Have you yeah. ever considered writing a book? Oh my God, we were talking about that like, last night. No, man, there's so many stories. Yeah, every time I tell any of these stories or we're sitting even at dinner just down on the boat, you know, you feel like you gotta write a book. You gotta write a book because it's, it's so wild the different experiences yeah. that you have. From working with Tyler to, to doing the Nobel Peace Prize to working with Rihanna yeah. to the Super Bowl to doing right. McCartney and Stranger and, Things, you guys are the biggest things. shows in the world. Yeah, all that stuff, you know. There's definitely, hopefully, there's a book. I, I don't know. I don't know what it would be like, but um, I think there's a lot of stories there to tell. Maybe, yeah, that might be a good idea. Yeah, a really good idea. And do you have any names for that book? If you had it off your head. Wow, oh, I think uh, Simplexity. Simplexities. Uh, that could work. Okay, I like that. Not about rock and roll, but we'll, we'll, it's very scientific. We'll try something. We we'll go over that. Now, Jeremy Porter wants to know, were you the one who bought Eddie Van Halen's 5150 Kramer? You can tell us now. No. That wasn't you? You didn't do no. that? How did, why it was only like $4 million, that? right? I don't yeah. know. I, don't, you know, I, here, I noticed <laughs> I joked and I said, when somebody posted, I put, okay, I just put a bit in it. But people believe that's the thing about socials. You can they start go off a war. It. Yeah, it's, t- it's scary. Say, like, I did. I said something like, "That's it." He said it. It's really happening. Now I will tell you. I did think I wanted to do a video on, but I just ran out of time. I thought that Gibson should have bought it for the Vault. They own Kramer now. That is an iconic guitar of that brand's history. Yeah. Why not get and put in the Vault? Who knows where it went to now? Hey, everybody, Mark. Why? Sh- this next question is great. It came from Nestor Casalos. Ask him if he's ever going to perform the song "Stiff" live. I love to hear and see him play the soul live. That right hand, though. I went back and listened to that Population One song, and I think everyone in that new age genre right now should just thank you for that, because if you listen to it, that was in 2002, right? That that whole style was in that song completely. It's crazy, right? It's like we were doing, it was such an odd song, and but... It was very percussive, and we were doing some crazy stuff with the drums and all you know, the, 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 the picking. And I think I was using an octave pedal throughout that whole thing. Some crazy shit that I was doing. I got to go back and listen to it. I, now I can't wait to listen to it. But yeah, there is some like we have a song called X Out on the album. It's kind of like something that might have been left over from three sides, like the third side. It's like right. it's like an, am I ever gonna, our version of am I ever going to change? But it's got a lot of synth. Yeah. Crazy. Shit. And there's so much stuff going on now that you know the label's like this is the shit people are doing now. It's like this really like long six minute song. I'm like, <laughs> Okay, so we, we caught up. <laughs> yeah, right, right. It just took a little while. Okay, you got another one over here, um, which is from H. Ralph again. When is Extreme and the Winery Dogs going to tour together? That would be the ultimate tour. And I gotta tell you, after seeing again, you guys said for the first time, which I am the most embarrassed to say I saw Extreme for the first time, but you guys don't go to South Florida that much. But it's incredible. And seeing those two bills together, you two bands, that could be insane. My yeah. brain would melt. I think there'd be too many notes in that group. Like the, the what a, law, there'd be a note police coming in. But you know what? I actually, I love those guys. They're on tour, but they they tour like extensively. I saw their tour. They were the dates released like last week. I'm like, do you find time to piss? Is there a day off there? Like, what is going on? But I, I believe they're in South America. Great band. I, you know, me and Richie, good right. friends. All those guys. She. I mean, what a band, right? What, yeah. what a bunch of players. That would be cool. That would be cool, but I don't think they, they would ask us. I don't know. They've never well, asked us. Well, if they consider they're getting paid by the note, that could be yeah, a good thing. that could be a good thing. It's going to help. Be rich. We could all be rich. <laughs> exactly. We'd open for you. Let's go wine your dogs. Let's do it. This is actually really going to at lily.coloring. Did you use the Nelly for one of the tracks on six? Mm, absolutely. I did use it. Uh, uh, Other Side of the Rainbow, the one I told you about. Yeah. And there's another song called um, 
Here's to the Losers on the album that I use it on, and I believe one more, uh, Small Town Beautiful. Okay, wow. So yeah, I saw that guitar name when you debuted it. Stunning. So last but not least, from Get Em, Get Em Straps, do you care about the style and quality of the straps you use? Is it a big factor when you're using a strap? Uh, it is. I've always kind of used the same one, but I, I've been, I, I was trying to do this design, and somebody actually, actually, I was trying to, since 91, I had this idea of doing this, you know, because a lot of us love to play lower because A, it just looks right. fucking better. We all want to be paid in Madison Square Garden. <laughs> like, it does. But, you know, everybody knows to take a solo, having your hand go like this yeah. is not the greatest thing in the world. That's why we sit and we play. Right. That's why I kind of put my knee up on a monitor when I'm about to do some yeah. crazy shit. So I, I had this, you know, idea years ago, back in the 1900s, of, uh, <laughs> for, uh, for, for flipping the, the strap up to do a solo. And, like, and then, you know, literally a click, a two set yeah. click that goes boom, and it springs up, and then you play, and then it comes down. That's so I don't have to put my foot on the wedge. But then, uh, and I was doing that with, mm -hmm. it was with Washburn, but she comes in and we, they're working on it, some sort of thing, and it never came to fruition. I think somebody online, uh, maybe a year ago, two years ago. I was going to say, I think I saw yeah, some yeah, video somebody recently came. on that. I should have sued him, but. Okay, well, that's for V over at Get Him Get Him Straps. They make the straps for, uh, they make Prince's straps. Uh, yeah. They did uh, Jeff Beck's straps, all that kind of great stuff. Really, yeah. great, really good stuff. So I'm going to leave it that. We're going to cut these questions short because you've been here too long you've given us so much good time so much good stuff and I really appreciate that so where can people follow Nuno Betancourt at? Wow I'm so good at the questions I believe I think it's Nuno Betancourt official I think that's it or maybe you guys can correct me I don't know at Nuno Betancourt official on Instagram that's about it I mean extreme extreme-band.com that's really new cool. album June new 9th album. That's where, that's, 6th that's where it's all happening that's where uh, that's where everybody I haven't been posting a lot because on my on my own socials because I mean you know when you're coming out with the band and everything you want to make sure everybody goes to one spot right. to hear everything and, and, and see everything right. and that's where really everything for the next the next long bit of time is going to be extreme-band.com I think more, okay. more than my own stuff perfect follow you know there follow you get it when it comes out I'm Mr. Sh well I'm at Mr. Shred Official it's changed a lot over the years all right, I don't even know I'm doing this all the time the and at Masters of Shred and of course at Monsters of Rock Cruise. We're aboard the Monsters of Rock Cruise 2023. About ready to wind down here. Thank you, Nuno Betancourt, for thank tuning you, in. I appreciate it, man. Thank You're you the so best. Much. Thank you for the And uh, absolutely, 100%. And thank you for tuning in. And don't forget to subscribe. For God's sake. Just subscribe. What the fuck? Gotta get those Instagram followers over to YouTube. Come on. Thank you, guys. Appreciate it. Take care. See you. Peace.